need to take some time. I was working for the Olympics in Japan. I took some time off and I went to Bali, Indonesia to do some scuba diving, just to get my head clear, to think about what I wanted to do. And then when I was scuba diving, I met this woman from Atlanta, Georgia, of all places. I'm in Bali, Indonesia, and this woman and her husband were also scuba diving. And they were telling me that this woman's sister just finished being a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar. And I knew about Rotary because up with people used to partner with Rotary all over the world. Rotary is one of the, the greatest global service organizations in the world. And she was telling me that this Rotary has a scholarship called the Rotary Ambassadorial Scholarship. And Tommy, with your experiences traveling all over the world with up with people and your experience working with the Olympics in Japan, you'd be a great ambassador of Rotary. And if you are ambassador of Rotary in return, they give you a full MBA, two-year scholarship, $50,000 scholarship to any business school in the world. And it's an automatic acceptance to any business school you get to choose from because of the prestige of the Rotary Ambassador Scholarship. Well, I didn't hear anything except automatic acceptance. I mean, that's all I heard. <laughs> and I said, this is for me. So I went back to Japan, applied for this application, and uh, it was mailed to me. And I spent the whole weekend filling out this seven-page application about why I should be chosen as the Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar. And I could barely read the application, let alone fill it out. And I just poured my entire heart about why I wanted to become the scholar. I talked about my experiences traveling all over the world with up with people. I talked about my mom and dad being a strong Catholic family. They wanted to have a lot of kids and they couldn't have had some miscarriages. My brother died at a very young age at birth and my parents wanted to have a bigger family, decided to adopt a little girl from Korea. How that affected me going to the JFK airport at eight years old and picking up my little baby sister from Korea and how that affected me. I talked about my time in East Carolina, my freshman year, Kid that lived across the street in the dorm, uh, Chad Harris was also pledging the same fraternity as me. And one night he drank a little too much and decided to go swimming in the Tar River, which is the river that goes through Greenville. And it's forbidden to swim in because it's shallow. And he dove off a dock after a big party and cracked his neck and broke his neck and became a quadriplegic. I laid a room with him and he was my roommate three and a half of those years at East Carolina. And living with a quadriplegic, when we graduated East Carolina, he and I and my roommate backpacked to 16 countries all throughout Europe and went to the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. That was an incredible experience. I just poured my heart out how much I love the world and have, as much as I've seen the world, I want to serve the world and I'd be honored to be a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar. And at the end of this application, after I asked all these questions, the last question was, what's your GPA? <laughs> and of course, my heart just sank. And then, then it said in small parentheses, 4.0 required. And I told you my grades. But I spent the whole weekend filling out this application. I wasn't going to let it go away. So I wrote what was required, 4.0. And then I put a little asterisk next to the 4.0. And on the back of the application, in very, very small handwriting, I wrote, Dear Sir or Ma'am of the Rotary Ambassador Scholarship Committee, if you took my high school GPA and you added it to my college GPA, I had a 4.0. <laughs> I mailed it in. Being an entrepreneur, sometimes you got to be creative. I didn't think that they would actually take my application seriously. But about eight weeks later, I got a letter from the president of Rhode International. And the letter said that out of 800 of the top college graduates in the country, that I was one of 10 finalists to interview for this Rotary Ambassadorial Scholarship. And they wanted me to report next month to New York to interview with the other nine candidates. And I remember calling my dad up and saying, Dad, they're, they're going to find out my transcript and I didn't have a 4.0 and I don't have any money because I spent all my money on these damn law school applications. I can't afford a plane ticket. And I remember my dad lending me a thousand bucks and said, son, you're going to fly to New York. And you're going to look that committee in the eye and you're going to tell them who you are. And you're not going to let grades define who you are. So I did that. I borrowed a thousand bucks. I flew home, ran in a car, drove upstate New York, a little town called Peekskill, New York, a little Italian restaurant off of I-95, and went into the restaurant. It's about 10 very distinguished Rotarians there, all in coat and ties, shaking our hands. And there was other nine candidates from Harvard and Yale and Princeton and MIT and all these, you know, famous schools. And my name badge said Tommy Spaulding, East Carolina University. And the Rotarians told the 10 candidates to wait in the bar area. And they were going to call us one by one to the banquet room and interview us for about a half an hour. My last name was Spaulding. So I did the math in alphabetical order. I had about a three and a half hour wait before my name was called. 
And I was nervous, real nervous. When I get nervous, I talk. So I started talking to these other people from Harvard, Yale, Princeton. And this was the most stuck-up group of people I had ever met. No one was talking. They were like spread out all different parts of the bar area, just studying their notes, getting ready for the interview. This was a $50,000 scholarship. This was a very you know, intimidating audience. Well, if I'm at a bar and I got to wait three and a half hours, and I'm a graduate of East Carolina University, what do you do? You go up to the bar and you get a drink, right? So I went up to the bar and got a Diet Coke. A terrible audience there, Diet Coke. And I started talking to the bartender. It was the middle of the day. There was no one at the bar except me and the bartender. Turns out this bartender was the fourth generation owner of this establishment. And I just started asking him questions just to kill time. And before you know it, this guy gives me his whole entire life story. I met his wife. His kid, the fifth generation, that was six or seven years old, running behind the bar. And this story of this Italian immigrant coming over, and the family story. He had yearbooks and photo albums, and he'd tell me the whole history of his grandmother's sauce. And just, it was an incredible story. And I just asked him, tell me about yourself. Three and a half hours went like this. My name got called. I went into the interview, and I got grilled with questions. And I could tell that there was a few people on the community that really were impressed and excited to hear my story. And then there was a few people on the committee that really didn't appreciate my two plus two is four humor. <laughs> because they did finally get my transcript from East Carolina and saw that I had a 2.0. But I did my best to talk about all the great leaders out there that may have had dyslexia or ADD or ADHD. And the heck, I have it all. I talked about all the people that changed the world one person at a time that didn't have great grades. And I did my best to convince that committee that I was the one that they should choose to be the ambassador or a scholar. And the story goes, at the end of the day, they took a vote. And five people on the committee were very impressed with this woman that graduated magna cum laude from Harvard University. She wanted to go to school at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. And that's where she got an MBA as a Rotary ambassador or a scholar. She wanted to raise six or seven million dollars of venture capital funds and open up small AIDS clinics throughout South Africa. I mean, how do you beat that? And then five people on the committee really saw the heart and passion for Tommy Spaulding. So five people voted for Harvard, five people voted for Spaulding. They went back and forth debating who should win this award. And the chairman finally said, we can only give one scholarship, one last vote. Someone's got to change your vote. Five for Spaulding, five for Harvard. And finally, the chairman looked at his watch and realized they'd been in the room the nearly entire day and finally said, let's take a break. Let's go to the bar and get a drink, and then we'll talk about it. So the 10 Rotarians get out of their banquet room. They walk over to the, the bar area. The bartender serves them drinks. And before you know it, they start talking about who should win this award. And they're going like a Miller Lite commercial. Tastes great, less filling, Spalding, Harvard, Spalding, Harvard. Really fighting. And the chairperson told me the story about a year after, and it's chapter two in my book. The chairperson finally looks around the bar and says, hey, guys, we've been here all of eight hours. We're all tired. Just someone change your vote. Who for Spalding? Five people raised their hands. Who for Harvard? Five people raised their hands. And the chairman looked just perplexed and then saw the bartender and said, hey, Mr. Bartender, hey, come over here. I got a question for you. You were in the room the entire day. You must have met all the 10 candidates. Who do you think should be the $50,000 Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar? And the bartender said, I didn't meet any of the other nine candidates. But that Tommy Spaulding kid, that kid came up to the bar, he talked to me for three and a half hours. What a genuine, nice kid. The bartender was the deciding vote, and I won the $50,000 scholarship. <laughs> Thank you. And why do I share that story at Prime Leaders Conference. It's not that we'd all should spend more time at the bar and get to know our local bartender, <laughs> although that might help. But that's when I realized at a very young age, in the mid-20s of my life, how important relationships are in our lives. They could be random relationships like I just met the bartender, or they could be deep, meaningful business partnerships like you have with Greenway. It could be relationships with people you work with at home, in your church, your temple, your community. But building relationships is so important. 